can't say they're on with an honor. Oh, well, I'm, I'm Airedale, sorry. Airedale? Yeah. Oh, okay, gentlemen, we'll call this meeting to order. It is 5.35, April 14th, 2020. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody on the commission for being here. Uh, I will now call this meeting to order. But what I would like to do is take a second here to thank uh, Adrian Seacrest for his time that he has served on the commission. His input and his knowledge was of, of great help. And I want to wish him the best of luck along with his wife and his further endeavors. Um, I think he has a lot going on. So Adrian, we, we thank you from all of us, I'm sure. Uh, I would also like to introduce tonight two new members to the Landmark Commission. Uh, the first one would be um, Robert Bob Pinkerton. Uh, welcome. Thank you. He has uh, a great interest in architectural preservation. Uh, and we thank him for joining our commission. The other one is Greg Hermosillo. Very good. Thank you. Um, I'd like to welcome you. He also has uh, knowledge in restoration. He uh, loves to do this kind of things, and, and both of them are honored to join us and help us do what we try to do to keep the Landmark Commission running. Before every meeting, I'd like to tell uh, our members and people who are asking for certificate of appropriateness that the Landmark Commission follows the guidelines set forth by the Secretary of Interior. And some of these things you have to go uh, be flexible. We try to do that. We try to work with those members who are asking for applications to uh, work in their buildings or on their homes. Um, we try to consider what they're doing, work with them in every way that we can so that we can save that historic value for our historic district. That's very, very important. Uh, people have worked with us. They appreciate the knowledge and things that we tell them, what they can do and what they can do. And it's just been a, a great uh, work of, of art for, for a downtown historic district. People do get concerned, they like old buildings, and it's obvious by what, what they've done with our district in preserving the German culture of what Herman is noted for. So with that, we'll open the meeting uh, with the approval of minutes. Does anyone have any questions or concerns regarding the previous meeting? Now I'll ask for a motion that we approve the minutes that have presented. I'll make a motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. So we have a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We will follow uh, the protocol here, I guess would be the right way to say, starting with number uh, a in the packet of information that was forwarded to each member um, tells you what this application is about, what they want to do, any guidelines that we may be able to help them with. But I must say most of these we are aware of because of the lag time from our last meeting to this current meeting. Uh, we've had the coronavirus take hold of our country. Um, timing to try to get this all set up and not call any meetings because of the health issues for not only our commission members but for the city of Herman. Uh, we've just sort of put everything on hold. But since there was a, a backup uh, of applications, we felt it necessary to call this meeting with the distance, with the mask and everything else so we can get these people on board with their certificates and get their projects going. So the first one we're going to have would be number A20726, Rachel Snyder with Gabe Gleason. Uh, 
they are restoring the house, or she's a new company moving into town, and they have a sign application as noted here uh, for the window right now, but it will be hanging down from the uh, porch overhang. Uh, the size of the uh, window sign is 24 by 36. And I want everybody to know, I, I think I informed everybody, everybody saw on our agenda for tonight but uh, talking with uh, Gabe and, and Rachel, uh, I told them, why not make one sign, get your business open, we'll get you here for the certificate of application, and then we'll turn around and uh, uh, let you hang the sign when you open your business. As everybody on this agenda tonight is running the same thing that we've all run into, COVID-19. So I'm sure the sign is made ready to go up if she's moved in. As you can see, this is what she will be have hanging from the overhang outside of her, her business. With that, do we have any concerns or questions concerning the sign uh, as presented before us today? With that, yes, then we have a motion to accept the sign as presented. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carried. Chuck, uh, the, the microphone's in here are good guys with a little mask on. You might want to speak up a little bit. Because even sitting here, I'm having a little trouble here. I'm sorry. Just a thought. Thank you, Dave. Sorry. What? How's that? Uh, our next one will be number B20-727. Uh, another uh, from Gabe Gleason. It's the adjoining building to what our previous uh, request was for. Um, everybody has in their packet the picture of what they're going to be doing. For the building, there's another sign that she wants to put overhanging the door that will be attached to the to the door. And she's going to fill that big spot there. The, pit, the uh, sign is three foot by 77. It pretty well covers that whole span. Um, any questions or concerns in regards to this application? Now that size is all right, when it's attached to the building, is that right? Right, yes. But it's not hanging. if it was hanging. I'm sorry? If it was hanging, it wouldn't be. It, it wouldn't be, no. But since it's attached, it would be permissible. I'll make a motion we approve. We have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Gentlemen, we have another sign. This will be number C, number 20, 728, by the Hagedorn Sign Company. Uh, this sign will be placed at 310 Market Street. If you don't have a correct copy, please make a note of the correct address, please. It's noted on the application. It's a two-sided sign which will be perpendicular to the building. There are two different signs here, both sides. I would assume by looking at this that one is going to be attached to the other. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, the upper sign would be 28 by 34. The bottom sign would be 12 by 36 which would meet the height restrictions of four or seven foot. Um, again, gentlemen, any questions or concerns regarding the slides before us? Is there a great deal of length? 
between the the two sides? There is two there a required distance? Mm -hmm. No, it'll, it'll probably be, I would say, you no, know, on the side that she's presented to us, it'll probably be maybe like two to three inches space between them. And that'll still keep the, the height in the, required? In a height of above seven feet. Motion we have a motion. We have a second. I'll second. We have a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, going to number D, number 20, 729 from Beth Simmons. Uh, she is wanting to put a Fence, four foot high fence, lattice design with trim, made out of natural wood. Now I'm not quite sure where, where she wants to put this. Okay. Her um, house, a great big red one on West, in the first block of West 3rd, the okay. big ugly red thing. In the back by the alley is a pretty good sized barn somebody about four years ago built a deck there. And I think, that, well, all this lattice work is stacked out there by the deck. I'm assuming that's where it's going. And I hope she takes her goddamn dog with her. But she, <laughs> well, she's got a four foot tall dog she ties to the front steps. You walk by and he's out to greet you or eat you, one or the other. Yeah. Okay. I drove by there. Well, about two or three days ago, and looked at it. Did it, it would be an improvement? Uh, yeah, that deck is relatively new, and I think that's with it all being out there. I'm assuming that's going to go around that. Just for so, have it back up to John and Tracy's backyard, or is it that's no, the alley? Is Wester, Wester, Wester. Is that right below St. George? No, just down the street from uh, your place. Chuck. Yeah, walk down the hill and turn right on yeah. 3rd Street, right down the alley. Next to, uh, the, next yeah, to Black Oak. Oak? Well, there's Black Oak, uh, Holt, Walt, Walt House, and a little house that Jim Holland owns, and then there's a big red. That, that one that, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I know it's from okay. Okay, and this fence, the high lattice fence with trim. So is this going to cover the whole backyard then? Is that what no. you, just the back of the alley? Just this little deck. The, the barn is here and they put a deck about out here about 12 feet. And it'll just go around nice. I'm pretty sure and leave the dog in the barn <laughs> instead of out on the sidewalk. Well, that's ignorant. Is everybody... Clear with the visual uh, concept that we have now as far as where this is going to go and how it's going to look and things. You can't see it from the front at all, can you? Okay. Yeah, you can. Just if you look, look from, right from the side, look. you look at the side of that yeah. house on the west. Okay. Does it run along with the one at Black Oak where that used to be? Or is it on the other side? Or I think they Tom have a Yeah. It's third one east. Okay. Walt, Tom and Kathy's Walt House, little one that Jim Holland owns, and then this one. Okay. Okay. You can't miss it. It's two and a half story red, ugly. Right. Yeah. That's right. Just about on the street. <coughs> it's really yeah. real far forward in the lot. Yeah. Okay, and the fence is going to be sort of a privacy fence or keep the dog in? I think it'll be a little privacy fence around that deck, but it's clear back in the alley, and hell, it'd have to be 15 feet high to be yep. any real privacy, because you guys can see it from your that. house, and, you know, everybody up the hill can look right down there. So, yeah. Yeah. I drove down the alley, you can yeah. see right in. Yeah. yeah. A little bit of the visible from the, from the street then? Yeah. Okay. But it's, 
Like I said, it's the back of the lot, so. Okay. Gentlemen, everybody okay? With that, do we make have a motion? motion? We have a motion. Do we have a second? I have a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Um, we'll now go to number E, number 20-730, Pam Meyer. As you can see by the picture here, um, not only before I forget about it, we need to, on that last application, I would like to have her send us pictures of where that thing's going to go for our records, please. Okay. Uh, Pam Maher, um, I think you have a uh, picture in your... Mm -hmm. Uh, this is uh, a four, four and a half foot high rod iron fence that will be attached to the uh, retaining wall on both sides of their property. Um, it's, it's a nice fence. There's uh, a lot of things going on from the alleyway. I'm sure you'll just see parts of it from the street. You won't see any of it. But, uh, yeah, you, you can see a little bit down the side, yeah. uh, but the, the wire fence is there, this would be, be a big improvement. And the fence that they have taken down and cleaned up was what the old wire fences used to be. So it's, a, it's an improvement to the property, of course. Gentlemen, do you have any questions or concerns? This is how the fence is being presented. Mm -hmm. Okay, with that, we'll ask for a motion to accept the proposal as presented to us. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have a motion, do we have a second? Uh, second. seconds. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Um, going down to F. Paul Duke, how is it? Doper. Duke, I'm sorry. Doper. Okay. Um, it's the building that uh, is on 105 East 4th Street. I will say that it's a non compliance building. Um, the work on this was started, I met with the contractor and he was given some wrong information and he didn't think that he would have to come before us to do this, um, but the project was so far along um, and it was a, it was looked better than having that old masonite siding on it, so um, they continued with finishing that project. He was very apologetic when I was talking with him, not realizing that that he was misinformed on this. Um, but since it's a non-compliance building, uh, we'll have to be flexible here. The, the thing that's bad about it, it is vinyl siding, and one of the things that this commission does not like to see done is, is vinyl put on some of these old buildings. Um, but it was too far along, I felt, to stop it. It's clean, <clears throat> it's fresh, uh, it's, it's one of those unfortunate things that happened, but I see no remedy to correct this situation anymore. Yeah, it looks like it's yeah. all complete. Yeah. It's, it's finished now. It's does anybody, does anybody have any questions or concerns about what happened here? Who was, was it a local contractor? Tom Green. Tom Green. Uh, is there a concern about uh, if this is let go or approved that 
somebody else to come in and do the same thing. Yeah, I, well, you let them do it, why not me? That's, that is, that's a good question, Greg. That is one of the issues that we have to deal with with this commission. That's why it's so important that people that buy property in a historic district are made aware of things that they can do and that they cannot do and one it's important to come before this before this commission. Uh, the majority of times that this has happened in our historic district I feel is, is pretty low, pretty low. Um, what I would recommend the commission entertain is that on this project here that it be noted that uh, due to misinformation um, and the contractor thought and the owner I assume thought it was okay to do they went ahead with the project uh, it will be noted with your approval on the application and on record and for future, if somebody would come along and buy the building and want to do something else, it would be the recommendation of this commission that mine will not be used because of the historic where it is now. If they want to go with a concrete board siding, which this council has approved in the past, we've all been fine with that. Uh, I wish maybe that's what they would have done, but. Unfortunately, it is not. So, um, yeah. I think in this case, we have to live with it um, and look at it for what it is. Again, remember, it's a non-contributing building. Um, it had a lot of different things done to it. The bricks looked like they were from the 50s. Uh, the masonite siding, probably from the late 60s, early 70s. So who knows before this commission was ever formed. Um, but we will note to the owner about, about our concerns and go with it. It's the best, I think that's the best we can do in this case. I hopefully, would other, hopefully other people will take heed and, and know that it's important to come before this commission for, for changes. I would think anytime anyone applies for a, uh, any type of permit to work on anything in the historic district, they should be handed a copy of the rules. That's, yes. We try to do that, Dave, and thank you. Um, we do have some general guideline rules that were set up. Uh, I talked at the last meeting, maybe we, we have to revise those, which is okay, but like anything else out there, things have to be done, updated, and it's kind of time that we consider looking at this. I will see Melanie and everybody doesn't have one with you, especially our new members. Make sure they have one. And uh, again, we can keep that for further upcoming discussions, which is, is important. I will tell the new members that supposedly the banks, all the realtors in town know where the land uh, historic district is located and they are supposed to inform new purchase people looking at property that you are in this landmark district and uh, give them all the proper information, send them to City Hall for, for anything that has to be done. Uh, we have a lot of buildings in town that are being worked on. They're bringing them up it's a good thing for the city of Herman because it makes the downtown historic district look fresh and clean and that's what we're striving for. And these things are going to happen continuously. But again, as I said earlier, there's things that we, we understand. And I've said this a lot of times, I feel that if the people 100 years ago had the materials that we have today, they would have used it, we would have something better. So, um, <coughs> We can try to again monitor everything that comes through and use our best judgment on all these calls. Okay, any other concerns? Or questions? Well, just a, a question to, is what would be the a course of action? Let's, let's say it was something so outlandish that it had already gone up. 
don't know what. Uh, it would probably be the advice of this commission to recommend that that be taken down and replaced with uh, a material or, or whatever the case would be that would be conforming to the building and location and and the uh, historic district. And that's about, uh, I think that would be about the best way to, to handle it. Yeah. There's no real authority or... Uh, the city is in the process of hiring a code enforcement officer. When someone comes before here and gets a certificate of appropriateness, the building permit, the permits do the work depends upon that certificate of appropriateness. Mm -hmm. When this officer is hired, there will be teeth, and this is going to stop. That's that's where I was going. Okay. Up until now, we've had a problem with the enforcement arm. We weren't sure where to go. Well, that's about to be fixed. I, it's, mistakes should happen. That's not a problem. Yeah. But there are people who are violently disobeying the rules. And if they want a building permit, by God, they're going to follow the rules. However, for siding does not require a building permit. So, so what? Siding, replacement of siding does not require a building permit. So that's, that's why but they... the fact that it was... Oh, that's so he never had to apply for a building permit beginning. to begin yeah. with? Yeah. Well, not for siding. So. This, that's how it uh, got farther. Uh, that's how it got further away. Yeah. 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 Regular paint started. Like painting the paint of building. Right. Yeah. Just regular maintenance, basically. Yeah. And these are some of the issues that we just need to update ourselves on. No, I was I not referring getting... to this particular instance. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, I, I was, it, my question was in general, too. It's still okay. Okay, with that, any other questions or concerns, gentlemen? With that, then I'll ask for a motion to accept uh, as presented. Glenn has made a motion. Do we have a second? A second. second. We have a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Again, Melanie, what we want to do is send a note to the owner about what has happened and uh, so forth. Um, Any other questions? With that, gentlemen, uh, old business, I have nothing as far as old business goes. New business. I took care of that first, welcoming our new members to uh, the Landmark Commission. Uh, I appreciate your time, your concerns, and uh, your dedication to keeping Herman looking as historic as, as possible. Melody, do we have anything else? Um, the CLG forum in April was canceled. Um, they don't have a new date for it. It may be online. Not, I don't know. Okay. To get our new members updated, uh, once a year, the state has a program in Jeff City that we are required to go to. And uh, it's very informative. It's an all-day program, but it keeps our CLG updated, our certified local government, uh, which is important to the city of Herman. Uh, the last several years, well, Dave has been up there with me, um, and before we were able to take the whole bunch of us up there, it's just a lot of great, great information to see what other townships deal with, how they, how they uh, work through them, what they do to preserve their historic culture and the preservations of homes and buildings and so forth. So it's sad that we won't have one this year, but I know they will let us know how it's going to be conducted. And uh, again, it's one of those things that we have to go to, plus some other meetings that may fall in place. So, uh, it's incredibly interesting. They make it entertaining. And it's more information that you can actually absorb. You want to take a lot of notes. And they give you all the stuff, too, to take home. 
I've grown in the last couple of years with people who couldn't. And but be perfectly honest, if nobody else wants to go, I'll go again. But you new guys, will, um, I really think you, you should go. It was, it is fantastic. I'm, I'm sure my wife would appreciate me getting out of the house. For <laughs> Especially you tell her you're going with. No, I can't do that. And they feed you real good. <laughs> yeah, they do. With that, if we have no other business, I will ask for a motion for adjournment. I'll make a motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. All those in favor, say the by say aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you, folks. Appreciate it. I like that. Right, you. Well, gentlemen, we're going to have about a minute or two here left. We're still going to be on the air. Just a moment. It's not a result. I don't care. Well, he he was looking do. right at me when he said that. Uh, <laughs> Chuck, you've been talking here, my friend. When you get those no, Jason warned us before you came. <laughs> when you get those things filled, let okay. me know. We'll make it. Uh, I'll figure out how I can come out here and sign up. Okay. Just so you